it feels like a comedy of errors. It is. It's now one minute after 10.30. We are beginning in, in the Book of Common Prayer on page 79 after the opening sentence. Page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer or on the Book of Common Prayer online. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We're now on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. The antiphon is at the top of page 81 for Lent. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Turning the page to page 82, we continue with the Venite. Together, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come. Let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. I mentioned prior to the start of our morning prayer, that we'll be making use of the readings for the fourth Sunday of Lent for the Holy Eucharist. Those can replace, on a Sunday, they can replace the normal morning prayer psalms and readings that are sung. So we will be making use of the, uh, the lectionary for the Sunday Eucharist. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. 
When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. Psalm 23 can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 612. If you have a Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 23 can be found on page 600. Still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. 
Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Two weeks ago, the decision was made to suspend using the common cup due to the reports of the coronavirus. Last week, last Sunday, about one third of our usual attendance came here in person with many more viewing that service online as well. And today I'm here in the church and uh, streaming this service, moving to morning prayer until we can share in communion together at a time that has not yet been revealed to us. So much has changed. So much has changed in such a short period of time that many of us feel like we have emotional whiplash. And yet, even though it might feel like things have changed drastically and suddenly, there has been a progression of change for us. But in today's gospel, a man's life is changed in an instant. Born blind, he wakes up one morning and goes about his usual routine. He does not know that he will become the center of a conversation between Jesus and Jesus' disciples. Perhaps, perhaps he can hear the sound of the crowd gathered around Jesus. Perhaps he can hear with great clarity the voice of Jesus himself. Then he hears a disciple ask, Who sinned, 
this man or his parents that he was born blind. Though blind, perhaps he could feel the entire crowd now staring at him, speaking about him as if he isn't even there. Jesus answered that it was neither this man nor his parents who sinned, but that this man's blindness will be used to reveal God's glory and the identity of Jesus. Notice that the blind man did not ask to be healed. Jesus goes to the man, spits on the dust, makes clay, covers the man's eyes, and sends him to the pool of Siloam. Why does Jesus do this action? Well, because an ancient Jewish belief had been, has been, that God made Adam out of the dust, but you can't make anything out of dust, really, can you? So the belief was, in the Jewish uh, lore, that God used spit to form clay out of the dust. Jesus is using that image to reveal his identity as God. For Jesus to re re recreate this man's eyes, just as God created the first human, is a remarkable thing. Those around Jesus would have been able to draw the conclusion of who Jesus is claiming to be in this action. The blind man returns, but now he can see. Probably hear a little bit of amazing grace in that. This is in itself, or this in itself, should have been enough for the whole, for the people who witnessed this to come to believe in Jesus as the Christ. But immediately, people begin to ask questions, asking one another whether the man whose life has changed in an instant is the same one who had been sitting at the city gate begging for his entire life. Some say that it's him. Others say it only looks like him. In this, they, like us, are divided. The doubt is rather amazing. This is a man of age, according to his own parents, yet no one recognizes the blind man. This tells us that not only was he blind from birth, but he had also been ignored by society since his birth. In essence, those in his community were blind to his existence, blind to his need, blind to his begging. Maybe they threw a coin his way once in a while, but they did not look at him. They did not talk to him. They did not get to know him. They did not acknowledge his basic human dignity. In ancient days, it was commonly believed that such births were the result of God's punishment for sin. That's what Jesus' disciples are asking. Jesus replies that the man's blindness has nothing to do with sin, but is used for God's glory and the revelation of Jesus as the Christ. It's tempting to say that we have evolved beyond the erroneous temptation to ascribe tragedy to God's retribution for sin, but we all know that whether it's a hurricane or a virus, there's a little part of us that asks if we're being punished for some communal worldwide sin. But we can go back to the words of Jesus, reminding ourselves that it's not sin that has brought coronavirus. Rather, God can and will use this virus, this time, this experience, to reveal God's own glory. Despite our nervousness about our jobs, our fear of getting sick, our frustration with isolation, we can still see that God is being revealed in a variety of ways. People are helping one another. Those who have been ignored like the blind man at the city gate are being tended to by family and friends. The internet, which has long been a haven for evil images and actions, is being swept by services like this one <coughs> and prayer like never before. Jesus spit on the dust, covered the man's eyes, and told him to go wash. The man did, and his blindness was lifted, and he could see for the first time. Perhaps in our conversations about washing our hands or seeing, really seeing, the other person so that we can stand six feet away, our modern-day blindness will be lifted so that we can see one another, each other's basic dignity. Not just that the other exists, but that basic human dignity that we are called to respect and honor and serve and love, just as Jesus Christ does himself. Amen.
you will continue with the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In place of the suffrages found on page 97, I'll be using the suffrages that we had planned to use for our Eucharist today, which is form 5. No need to turn there. Our response is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for Christ's church and the world. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Barbara, George, Mary Jane, Virginia, Joanna Calfee, Dana Heffern, Ashley Hooper, Sally Hunt, Addison Morgan, Ryan Webb, and Sarah Whitehead, and for all those we name silently or aloud at this time, We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, especially Jane Davis and Lynn Rosser, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who have been stricken by the coronavirus, those health care workers who tend to them, for all those who care for any who are sick. And for an end to this dreaded disease, O Lord, show your power and your might. 
work a miracle in our midst so that we may give you glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of blessed St. John and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, to you, O Lord, our God. Receive these, O Lord, these humble prayers and supplications. Receive them with the humility with which we offer. Be pleased with our sacrifice and our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may when rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church. Education and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior. Amen. We now continue with the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 101. Together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. go to um, sign up um, sign up on the let's see you should have gotten an email with a link to the so that you can choose which slot you want each slot has a unique uh, access code and so depending on 